Archive articles. Well, we have all read the articles here. Uh, Archiv is, is a really nice database with, uh, Mark, yeah. Before you go into it, uh, since you're showing code, can you maybe zoom in a little bit uh, just so the code is more? Uh, it's, it's not that clear, right? Yeah. Yeah, this is much better, thank you. Perfect. Um, you know, we want some data and uh, what's nicer data than a lot of abstracts from mostly computer vision and some machine learning uh, articles. And I randomly sampled 10,000 of them just, just to make it a little bit easier for myself. And that's what we're gonna do the topic modeling on. This abstract, for example, is about reinforcement learning. And so we have a lot of more of those abstracts that we want to see, okay, which articles or which topics become you know, popular, uh, which topics can we find? Can we find some relationships between some of those topics? Can we do some fine tuning, et cetera, et cetera. Now, we can train our model. We can do the exact same thing as we did before. We import our package, we instantiate it and do a fit transform on our abstracts. Now I can do that, but I'm, I'm kind of lazy and we have limited time. So I'm gonna load in the model instead I've done this saved the model and, and now I'm essentially gonna load it in, which I've done before. So after this training procedure, and this training procedure is of course, sentence transformers, uh, UMAP, HDB can scan CTF, IDF, we can view the topics that we have created. So what we do is we have our topic model, we do get topic info, and what we get is a data frame that has several columns. We have the column topic, that shows you the topic ID. It goes from minus one to 147. So we see two things happening here. There are a lot of topics that were found as a default, but there's also that minus one. And that minus one, those are outliers. I'm still showing the outliers because otherwise you feel, feel like you're missing documents, but those are all the documents that couldn't be clustered. And we can fine tune it so it becomes larger or smaller, but that depends on HDB scan. We have the count of the number of documents in a topic, but most interestingly, we have the topic representation. We have the topic ID and then words that are you know, best representative of that cluster of the topic. And if you pick this one, that's reinforcement learning, right? And we have some object detection and we have some adversarial attacks and we can go through all of these topics and see what exactly is happening here. We can also say, okay, we're gonna pick the top 10, 10 most frequent ones and I read through them. We see uh, segmentation, some molecular topics. We can dive into those to see what exactly is being talked about. Something uh, about transformer models, self-attention, vision. It's interesting to see that also being there. Um, we can go through all of these topics and, and, and read them. But we can also say, okay, I don't like this representation. I don't like the four here. I don't like those underscores. I think there are way too many words here. So let's customize our topic labels. Now, we can generate topic labels automatically based on the words that we have here. But instead, let's say we have three. We remove that topic prefix because it's ugly or it's annoying or you know whatever the reason might be. And we change the separator because that underscore might make it more difficult to read. And one thing that we add on top of that, let's define our own topics because I, I think I know that this is about transformer-based models. And I know that this one is about reinforcement learning. So we can also do some topic labeling here. Now we run this and we get exactly what we've done before, right? What we wanted to be doing, we want to have this representation a little bit nicer than this one. And we might be doing this because we want to visualize certain topics. And, you know, we have some topics that are more interesting than others. So we label them. But, you know, you can also say I want 10 words or 20 words. So it gives you a little bit more understanding of what is happening here. And there are a bunch of more things that we can do with the topic model. We can update the topics to you know, change the n-gram range because I want words concatenated in a way. I want to merge certain topics because I think they are very similar to one another and I don't want to consider them separately. I might want to reduce the topics to 100 or 50 or 10. 
I might want to find certain topics that I couldn't find before, or because I don't want to go through 150 topics to see if my topic of interest is in there. And there are many things that we can do with, with something like this um, that gives us a little bit more control over how our topic model looks like. But after doing all of this, we still want a little bit more knowledge about which topics are in there, but also the relationship between topics or the relationship between documents and topics or the relationship between words within the topics, et cetera, et cetera. And for that, we come to the second pillar and that's the, the visualizations that are possible with, within their topic.